So I'm sure you've all heard at some point something to the extent of the music industry is broken. So I'm going to try to sum up the last 15 years in about 15 seconds. Um, so bear with me. First, we have albums. Artists make a lot of money. Um, they fly privately, of course, and uh, drink lots of champagne. Uh, next, Napster and file sharing come along and the party ends for everyone. All of a sudden, music is free to everybody. Next, Steve Jobs comes along and introduces iTunes and the iPod, and all of a sudden, fans can buy the one song off the album they want for only 99 cents and leave the rest of the album. And today, we live in a world of unlimited music streaming on YouTube and Spotify and Pandora, and it's almost all free to fans, except for some monthly charge sometimes, $10 maybe, the price of one album. So the problem is fans don't spend the money they once spent on recorded music. And the question is, can we restore what's been broken? Can we make the industry whole again? And can we make it better? So today I'm going to talk to you about the musician-fan relationship and suggest that by strengthening it, we can strengthen the industry as a whole. Uh, but first, I want to start right here. You and me, I want to start with this relationship. And I'd like to invite my brother to the stage, who is also my bandmate and co-founder at TuneSpeak. And we're going to do a Pernikoff Brothers original for you.
Uh, so Rick and I have been playing music together since we were little guys, if you can imagine we were ever little, right there. Um, but ironically, we didn't really start taking our own music seriously until we moved to Silicon Valley to work at a startup that really had nothing to do with music. Um, so, you know, like in any startup, we were working long hours, but at night, we really found ourselves coming home, grabbing our guitars, and, and writing music. And uh, soon after that, we started playing on the mean streets of Palo Alto and eventually hit the coffee shop circuit, which is as lucrative as you might imagine. Um, we grew our hair out. Uh, we left Palo Alto to pursue music full time. We bought a burgundy van. Uh, we named it Ron, actually. And, uh, yeah, and then we, we hit the road playing shows for much bigger audiences. But one night uh, here in St. Louis, actually, uh, we played a show at the Old Rock House, which is just downtown, great venue. Go, go ahead, Old Rock House is awesome. And we came off stage and a young man came up to us and he said, you know, I think you guys are one of the best bands in St. Louis, I love your music. He started naming off songs from the album. He, he didn't even know we were playing, so we only caught the second half of the set, and he said, had I known, I would have come down and brought all my friends, and, you know, honestly, I couldn't believe it. Um, you know, here we are pouring ourselves into this music every day, every night. We're trying to reach people and touch people, and I don't even know who our true fans in St. Louis are. You know, had I known this guy or who this guy was, I could have invited him down uh, to watch Soundcheck or talk about the music, or I could have you know, had a drink with him. And, uh, you know, we could have shared more than the music with him that night. And we probably could have made him a Pernikoff Brothers fan for life. So, um, you know, we missed that opportunity. And in today's music industry, no artist can afford to miss that opportunity. Uh, so Rick and I set out um, to make sure that they won't. We put our uh, rock star lives on hold and we built TuneSpeak. So, TuneSpeak is a loyalty platform that helps artists identify and reward their most passionate fans. So technically, what we do at TuneSpeak, we track song listens and video views uh, and shares on social media. But really what, we're what, excuse me, really what we're doing is identifying the most passionate, loyal, and influential fans out there. Um, and we're helping artists reward these fans with things like tickets, or backstage passes, or signed merchandise, or even private concerts. In fact, Pernikoff Brothers were the first band to use TuneSpeak after we built it. We rewarded one of our most influential, passionate fans in St. Louis with a private concert right in his living room. 
Um, and since then, yeah, it was a good show. And since then, we've helped hundreds of artists reward thousands of passionate fans. Uh, we've worked with some of the biggest artists in the business. So uh, Dave Matthews Band, Aerosmith, Miranda Lambert, Lionel Richie, my personal favorite, uh, John Mayer, Maroon 5, Kings of Leon, uh, and Lenny Kravitz. There we go. So. Uh, you know, music is powerful, and I know everyone in this room has felt that. Um, and I think we crave that feeling once we know it. And the more we listen and identify with the music that really moves us, the more curious we become as fans. We want to know the story behind the lyric. You know, we want to know the person behind the mic. We want to take a piece of that experience home with us. That's why today is such an exciting time for the music business, because we're finally sophisticated enough as an industry to use all this online data and actually do something meaningful with it. Artists can, can finally use technology to strengthen their relationships with their fans and convert casual fans into fans for life. And it's those lifelong fans who are gonna hold up the artists and enable them to create music for us all to enjoy. And really, it's a partnership. You know, we're fans. Rick and I are fans. You guys are all music fans. And we have to be in it with the artists. Um, and honestly, we stand to gain the most as fans. When the artists open up to us, we can take that experience or that moment or that signed record and cherish it alongside the music that we already love. Um, and that's, at the, that's the point that we become the impassioned fans that the artist and the industry need us to be. Thank you guys very much.